All right, in this question, they give you the graph, aggregate demand, aggregate supply, and then they give them this long run aggregate supply curve as well. The location of a long run aggregate supply curve is super important. If the actual GDP we're producing is beyond or past the full employment long run GDP, then we have an inflationary gap. The long run aggregate supply curve represents the idea of full employment. So four to 6% unemployment is the long run. So at this GDP right here, we have like 2% unemployment. Now to better explain that concept, let's try to show you what I'm talking about on the business cycle. Over time, an economy goes up and economy goes down. So where is an inflationary gap on that graph? Well, it's gotta be right here. So it's also called as point A. Now this looks great, and it looks like we have this great economy, but there's a problem here. The problem is inflation. When we have very low unemployment, there's gonna be a lot of pressure for prices and for resources. If you have a job and everybody else has a job, then new companies that wanna hire people, they need to hire you, but they have to increase the wage to get you. And if businesses wanna produce more, they have to outbid each other for the resources they need to produce stuff. So this can happen, but only in the short run. So this question is saying, how is this economy gonna to adjust to new long run equilibrium? Well, when the price of these wages and the price of these resources go up, that's gonna cause the aggregate supply curve to shift to the left. This will cause the price level to go up and the quantity to go back to full employment. So if we call this point, point B, that's just like over here, an idea of point B, right? The trend line or the full employment line. So in the short run, we could have an inflationary gap, but eventually in the long run, wages and prices for resources will go up. It's story time. All right, this is a huge unit. So we're halfway through. It's time for a story and kind of relax a little bit before we move forward. So a few years back, I had this student in my class, and his name was Kyle. Kyle's one of those students who wasn't particularly good in other classes, but he was really good at economics, but he was kind of a loudmouth. So we had a lot of fun. I'd give him a hard time, he'd give me a hard time. So Kyle was in my class, and it happened in the same class as his girlfriend. They were the kind of couple that fought all the time. Sometimes they'd come in class holding hands. Sometimes they'd say, we just broke up. Then they get back together. Then they break up. Then they get back together. Then they break up then they get back together. So this happened all year long. Now on Valentine's Day, things must have been going well because they were holding hands, they walked into class and she had flowers and she also had another gift from him. It was this huge blanket that had these different pictures with them together and on the back side, it had his first and last name in big giant letters. She wore it over her shoulders in class and she was so proud that she got this awesome gift from her boyfriend. Fast forward about two weeks. First he walks into class and you tell something's wrong. Then she walks into class and she just looks furious. So the whole class picks up on it and we're all kind of like, whoa, something bad happened. So I start class and I'm teaching stuff and we start working on things. The students are working on a worksheet or something and it's really quiet in class. So I slowly walk across the room and walk up to the girl and say, so if you're not using that blanket, can I have it? Everyone in the class just freaks out. We're all just laughing. It was absolutely hilarious. <laughs> Oh man! Now it seems kind of mean, but the truth is I knew they were gonna get back together. And like two days later, wouldn't you know it, they're back together again. 